just write the conclusion at the end of this experiment okay the experiment to perform the kirchhoff's voltage law so here there is a circuit diagram you have to draw then here there are two tables one is theoretical reading and another is practical reading so in the theoretical reading you first calculate the theoretically answer of the voltage across r1 r2 r3 and r4 okay theoretically by using the kvl then after write down this practical reading data that we actually measure in the practical clear you see the video of experiment number 2 in that we have write down the data of practical readings vr1 vr2 vr3 vr4 that we measure by using the voltmeter multimeter and set in the voltmeter and measure the all the four voltages here so in this table you write down the practical value in the theoretical reading table write down the your theoretical value after doing the calculation okay and then after write down the conclusion clear all of you same way for the experiment number 3 kcl write down the first theoretical table calculate it by using the mesh analysis using the kcl and then after write down this practical reading the reading which you have already taken in the practicals okay and then after find out the conclusion clear all of you so if you, here there is a calculation here written here in this experiment word file but you can also submit your calculation in the separate pdf file by writing in your notes scan your calculation and then submit it to with this assignments uh, sorry with this experiment okay so all of you please submit this you may submit in word file or it may be in pdf file yes sir we need to draw circuit diagram in a notebook yes yes you can draw the circuit diagram in the notebook during the calculation you can see here there is a calculation okay so in this calculation you draw the diagram you not you not need to draw here tamara yahan draw karvani zarur nahi barabar je word file ma okay okay so you do draw here in the calculation clear and that calculation you can submit separately in separate pdf file okay or you can make the one pdf file which has all these three experiment as well as the calculation of second and third practical okay as a single pdf whatever you like okay yeah? so you can submit a single pdf of all this or you can separate this you, uh, you can submit a separate pdf for calculation okay is there any doubt now we have a doubt sir how to submit the experiment no sir sir we can this sir sorry what sir for all do calculation by mesh analysis yes 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 in the kcl you apply the kcl law okay here in this second practical you apply the kvl law the same way as we as we calculate the examples je rite apne example calculate kare the rite Yeah. Sir, so what did you told about the um, circuit diagram? We have to draw separately. Yes, yes. Here in this experiment, here it is given in this word file. Okay, circuit diagram to draw here. But you can draw the circuit diagram in the calculation also, which you can submit separately in your notebooks. Okay. okay so there sir. is no need to draw the circuit diagram in this word file. Tamara, here the circuit diagram draw karo ni jaram nadi. Second and third. experiment ma barabar ch word file ma but you draw in the your calculation you was tama calculation karso tya tamara figure draw karvi padse barabar ch so you draw in the calculation the circuit diagram there is no need to draw here clear all of you sir so in the word file we have to show only conclusion and the uh, yes yes conclusion and table only okay in word file you submit only conclusion and table and calculation you can submit in the separate file first you write down in your notebook then scan it and send the pdf clear or the second option is that you make this word file in pdf after writing the conclusion and this table convert this word file into pdf and then merge your both the pdf one pdf of this experiment plus one pdf of your calculation 
so you can also submit the merge pdf of all the three experiment as well as calculation as a single pdf or you can separate uh, you can submit also separately here yeah. now is there any doubt yes anyone no, in first experiment we have to write conclusion only first experiment there is only conclusion clear okay okay sir now is there any doubt yes no sir okay so i start the lecture no sir okay so, yes, so let's start the lecture so last lecture we have studied the chapter number 3 electrostatic first we see the coulomb's law there are two law first law and second law then we derive the equation of uh, force acting on the charge then study the definition of electric field and the direction for positive charge what is the direction for negative charge what is the direction then we see the next definition of electric field strength e so we have the uh, know the equation it is force per unit charge then definition of electric flux density d it is flux per unit area then relationship between the flux density and electric field intensity so we derive the equation of electric field intensity and electric field strength e is equal to epsilon 0 then absolute and relative permittivity of the different dielectric materials then some of the definitions like electric potential what is called electric potential that equation electric potential difference potential gradient then dielectric strength what is called as the dielectric strength then we understand what is a capacitor what is capacitance what is the difference between these two terms okay yeah, the equation then study the capacitance value calculation for capacitor which has a uniform dielectric medium between the two conducting plates then what is the value of capacitance so we derive the equation c is equal to epsilon 0 epsilon r a by d that is for uniform dielectric medium then derive the equation of capacitance for partly air medium and partly insulating material so you can see the thickness t of any any insulating material and partly air between the two conductive plates then what is the value of capacitance that we derive the equation c is equal to epsilon 0 a divided by d minus t minus t upon epsilon r t is the thickness of insulating material if air is the only insulating material then the equation of capacitance is epsilon 0 a by d then third one we derive the equation for the capacitance for if three dielectric medium plays between the two conducting plates three different dielectric medium so three different voltages you get across each dielectric medium so last we derive the equation of capacitance is epsilon 0 a divided by d1 upon epsilon r1 epsilon r1 that is the relative permittivity of first dielectric material and d1 is the thickness of this dielectric material same way d2 upon epsilon r2 plus d3 upon epsilon r2 so that is the equation for composite dielectric material two or three different dielectric material placed between the two conducting plates so at that time you can use this equation to calculate the capacitance and then after we first calculate the example for same theory a uh, composite dielectric medium there are three dielectric material so derive the equation that is in the same equation epsilon 0 a divided by d1 epsilon r1 plus d2 epsilon r2 plus d3 epsilon r3 so i think all of you understand this example how to calculate capacitance in this example we calculate the capacitance as well as dielectric stress dielectric stress means electric field strength e so here we have three dielectric medium so we get the three dielectric strength e1 e2 and e3 but in the last lecture we calculate only e1 the rest of the two e2 and e3 i give you for home okay i hope all of you have calculated this electric field intensity e2 and e3 that is e2 is nothing but d upon epsilon 0 into epsilon r2 epsilon r2 that is given already in this example 2.5 epsilon r3 is given to d2 and d3 is already given so you can easily calculate this e1 e2 and e3 all of you understand this example is there any doubt koi ke doubt che example number 1 mein no sir okay so same exam uh, same type of example second example 
parallel plate capacitor has plates area 2 meter square spaced by the three slab of different dielectric material and which has a relative permittivity 2 3 and 6 it means er1 er2 and er3 is given 2 3 and 6 respectively and thickness is given it means d1 d2 and d3 is given 0.4 0.6 and 1.2 mm so calculate the combined capacitance it means calculate the c and the dielectric strength in each material same as the previous example calculate e1 e2 and e3 here voltage is given applied voltage 1000 so process is same use the same equation as we have calculated the example number 1 so i give you this example as a homework okay so we i move for the next example third example all of you write down this third example sir uh, can you show the example of means the question of the previous uh we can can we note down on somewhere sir the previous question yeah you can get from the recorded video okay so i not we not waste your time to write down the uh, examples okay so you can see in the, the recorded video recorded video ma available as okay record thank you sir so you can write the example by post this video okay yes sir okay so write down this third example a capacitor has capacitor is made up of two plates write down all of you this example capacitor is made up of two plates with area of 100 cm square which are separated by mica mica is a one type of insulating material so that is placed between the two conducting plates of the capacitor separated by the mica sheet of 2 mm thick it means d is given distance between two conducting plates if relative permittivity of mica is 6 find its capacitance if now the one plate is moved further to give an air gap of 0.5 mm wide between the plate and mica then find the value of change in capacitance Do you understand this example? What to calculate? So, which equation you use here to calculate the capacitance? Here you calculate two capacitance. First, you calculate the capacitance. when only mica is present between the two conducting plates and then second is that if now one plate is moved further to give an air gap of 0.5 mm wide it means now two dielectric medium between two conducting plate one is mica and another is air gap and air gap thickness is what 0.5 mm now your capacitance value is changed because two dielectric medium is placed between two conducting plates so now find out the change in the capacitance clear so first you can find find out the capacitance c1 which has only mica between the two conducting plates and then find out c2 second capacitance value which has a two dielectric medium one is mica as well as air gap all of you understand this so you can see here in the figure first we have only one dielectric medium mica which has a 2 mm of thickness so that gives the value of capacitance is c1 so you first find out c1 then after it says that if one plate is moved further to give an air gap of 0.5 mm so one plate is moved you can see that this plate is moved 
from 0.5 mm because between that air gap is present so now there are two dielectric medium one is my air gap so now value of capacitance c2 for this condition when two dielectric medium is placed so you first calculate c1 with mica and then calculate c2 with mica as well as air gap all of you understand this example yes or no yes sir okay so calculate first c1 and yes, give me the answer first calculate c1 and give me the answer Okay, which equation you use to calculate the C1? Which equation you use to calculate the C1? Anyone? C is equal to A into epsilon naught upon D. So for C1, you calculate, uh, you use the equation epsilon 0 epsilon R into A divided by D. Okay. When there is only one dielectric medium, you can see the theory here uniform dielectric medium. Here we have only mica, so that is a uniform dielectric medium. So for that equation C is epsilon 0 epsilon r divided by d. Okay, we have already divided, uh, we already derived this equation in the last lecture. Okay, so use this equation epsilon 0 epsilon r a by d. Epsilon 0 is constant that you remember. 8.854 into 10 raised to minus 12 er that is relative permittivity here mica is relative permittivity is given 6 and area here area is given 11 centimeter square so first convert this into meter square okay and d d is nothing but a thickness of this insulator so that is given 2 millimeter Again, convert this 2 millimeter into meter. So it is 2 into 10 raised to minus 3. Okay, what is the answer? C1. Answer so how is C1 now? Hello, please calculate very fast. In exam, you not get that much of time. Okay. So do the calculation fast. Yes. Anyone give me the answer? C1. Sir, uh, sir, answer is 2.92 into 10 raised to power minus 15. 2.92. No, no, answer is 29.21 into 10 raised to minus 12. You can see this here. Answer is 29.21 oh. picofaraday. Both are same. Yes, sir. But, but you say 2.9 into 10 raised to minus 15. Sir, what? What do you say? Your answer is 2.9 into 10 raised to minus 50. Sir, I just moved the digits uh, to the left and divided by 100. So it, it becomes 2.9 into 10 raised to minus 30. 13. Yes, okay. sir, not 50. It is not 15. Not 50. Yes, yes. It's then it is right. Yes, then I, it is I, right. Sorry, sir. Okay. So same way. Now, what is the value of C2? Now calculate C2. Now we have two dielectric medium. This is the second figure. One is mica with thickness of 2 millimeter, which has relative permittivity 6. That is given. 
another medium is air which has a thickness of 0.5 mm and you know the relative permittivity for air and vacuum is 1 clear so which equation you use to calculate this c2 kya equation use kar so sir epsilon not a divided yes. by d1 upon epsilon not r1 plus d2 upon epsilon not r2 yes very good very good so use this equation and find out the value of c2 okay so this is a composite dielectric medium the third case which we have seen in the theory when two or three different dielectric medium place so you can use this equation yes epsilon 0 a here we have only two dielectric medium so it is d1 upon epsilon r1 plus d2 upon epsilon r2 clear so use this equation and find out the value of c2 and give me the answer and convert all the values in meter okay all the distance are given in millimeter convert into meter sir yes yes what is the answer 11.11.68 11. picofarad yes 11.68 picofarad yes you can find this calculation here yes epsilon 0 8.854 into 10 raised to minus 12 area in meter square 11 into 10 raised to minus 4 d1 is given convert into meter 2 into 10 raised to minus 3 divided by 6 relative permittivity plus d2 d2 is given 0.5 mm convert into meter 0.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 And relative permittivity for air is one, so you get the answer 11.68 into 10 raised to minus 12. 10 raised to minus 12, it means it is a pico farad. Clear? So you get the answer C2. All of you get this answer? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, so I move. Sir. Okay. So I move for the next topic, capacitance in series. Okay. So all of you know that when capacitance connected in series, so what is the equation to calculate the equivalent capacitance? Okay, so that we derive here. You already learned this in your eleven uh, in your twelfth standard. But here, just we repeat this. So, as you know that when two capacitors, uh, two or more capacitors are connected in series, so which quantity is remain same in these three capacitor? When the voltage, voltage, when it is connected in series, I am saying current, current. current. Yes, current and any other quantity? Charge. Any other? Yes, charge. Here in the capacitors, we have only three. Uh, we have three quantity. Okay. We keep in mind three quantity when we talking about the capacitor. Which three quantity? One is the voltage across capacitors V. Q. Second is charge on the capacitor, and third one is the capacitance of the capacitor. Okay. When we talking about the resistance at that time. we keep in mind the three parameter one is voltage current and resistor same way here in the capacitance we keep in mind the three parameter one is voltage charge and c so out of this three parameter one parameter is always remain constant in series or parallel connection in series connection because the current is remain same in all the three capacitor so charge is remain constant and that is q you can see here All the three capacitor, C1, C2, and C3, have the same charge Q. Why? 
because same current is flowing through this capacitor so charge always same and remaining two terms or remaining two parameters c1 and v1 that is remain different because each capacitor has different value of capacitance so obviously the voltage across them is also different okay so in series connection q is remain same or we can say q is remain constant in all the capacitance and c1 and v1 is different okay so here in capacitance series connection we derive the equation of equivalent capacitance from the equation of voltage so total voltage applied across this is v as in this battery first capacitor has v1 second capacitor v2 and third capacitor has v3 voltage so as per the series connection as per the kvl the equation of supply voltage is equal to what v1 plus v2 plus v3 here yeah. so you can see here v is equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 now as we know the equation of v in terms of charge and capacitance we know the equation of c is equal to what q by v so from that we can make the equation of v it is q by c so v1 is what q divided by c1 v2 is what q divided by c2 and v3 is what q divided by c3 q is remain constant so if you put all these three value in the equation this one so you get v is equal to q by c1 plus q by c2 plus q by c3 take the common q so you get 1 upon c1 plus 1 upon c2 plus 1 upon c3 so if equivalent capacitance of all the three capacitor you can say that is c equivalent so the equation of voltage applied voltage become what total voltage v is equal to charge q divided by equivalent capacitance so if you put the equation of this voltage in this equation here so you get this equation q divided by c equivalent is equal to q into 1 upon c1 plus 1 upon c2 plus 1 upon c3 so q q is constant uh, sorry q q is common in the right hand side and left hand side so it is cancel out so you get the equation of equivalent capacitance is 1 upon c equivalent is equal to 1 upon c1 plus 1 upon c2 plus 1 upon c3 so that's why that's way we derive the equation of equivalent capacitance in series connection similarly suppose n capacitor are connected in series so it is the addition of inverse of all the capacitors 1 upon c1 plus 1 upon c2 up to 1 upon cn so in mathematically we write uh, summation of n is equal to 1 to n 1 upon cn suppose five capacitor so it is summation of 1 to 5 and inverse uh, addition of all the inverse of the capacitance so you get the and then after inverse this so you get the equivalent value of the capacitance clear yeah. same way capacitors in parallel connection so here again there are three quantities capacitance charge and voltage so in parallel connection which quantities remain constant voltage voltage voltage, voltage. So, yes voltage. Because, <laughs> yes yes voltage remain constant because in parallel voltage remain same so here you can see that in this figure our supply voltage is 12 volt c1 c2 c3 are connected in parallel each has a different value of capacitance so when three different capacitors are placed in parallel so obviously different amount of current is passing through this capacitor if same amount of capacitor same current is is equal to i2 is equal to i but here all these capacitors have this different value c1 is different c2 is different c3 is different so all have a different current so when different current is flowing through the capacitors it means they have different charge so charge is different c1 has q1 c2 has q2 charge and c3 has q3 charge and voltage across each capacitor is remain same because it is connected in parallel clear yeah. so that equation of equivalent capacitance for parallel connection we derive from the equation of current so total current flowing from the supply is i and one current flowing from c1 is i1 c2 is i2 c3 is i3 so incoming current is i outgoing current is i1 i2 and i3 so you can make the equation i is equal to i1 plus i2 plus i3 clear but here in this capacitance we have the term what charge so convert this current equation in terms of charge so when you multiply the current with the time then you can get the 
charge if you know the definition of current definition of current says that the amount of charge passing from at any point per unit time that is called as a current it means i is equal to q by t amount of charge passing from any point in one unit time or per second that is called as a current so from that here we multiply this equation with the time t so we get the equation of charge so i into t that gives the total charge i1 into t that gives the charge on c1 capacitor q1 i2 into t that gives the q2 i3 into t that gives the q3 clear all of you so here you can see that we get the equation q is equal to q1 plus q2 plus q3 from this equation okay now what is the value of q1 so q1 is what equation of q is c into v so here q1 is equal to what c1 into v v is what applied voltage same voltage you get across the c1 because all are connected in parallel so q1 is c1 into v q2 is c2 into v q3 is c3 into v put all these three value in this equation so you get the c1 into v plus c2 into v plus c3 into v take the common v put the value of q so q is what equivalent capacitance of all the parallel connection into voltage across this capacitor which is same it is v so it is c equivalent into v so put this value here in this equation so you get the equation c equivalent into v is equal to v into c1 plus c2 plus c3 so v v is cancel out so you get the answer c equivalent is equal to c1 plus c2 plus c3 so in exam suppose you ask that derive the equation of capacitance connected in parallel so you can follow this procedure okay not directly write the answer you follow this procedure first do the circuit diagram do the number of capacitors parallel use the equation of current then multiply with the time convert into charge then put the equation of charge and then after derive this equation same way in the series connection you may ask that derive the equation of equivalent capacitance for the series connection so you follow these steps okay and then after derive this equation so i think clear this one all of you clear this series parallel connection how to derive the equation so this is a theoretical part series parallel connection of the capacitor next we calculate the example related to this is there any doubt up to this koi doubt chat kya sudhima yes anyone yes or no no sir okay no sir so let's move the examples related to this series parallel connection so write down the first example calculate the charge and voltage of each capacitor this is a circuit diagram two capacitor c1 and c2 that is connected in parallel all of you please write down this do this circuit diagram and calculate the charge and voltage of each capacitor
first calculate the charge q so q is what c into v c is what uh -huh. that is a, that is nothing but equivalent capacitance okay and v is the voltage yes what is the answer of charge first you find out the yes yes what is the value of charge 9 into 10 to power minus 4 coulomb yes 9 into 10 is to minus 4 coulomb yes very good what is the value of equivalent capacitance of this circuit diagram 4.5 4.5 micro 4.5 micro farad 4.5 micro farad okay all of you please write down the unit of each parameter when you doing the cal calculation of example बदा ने पैरामीटर वेल्यूज लखनऊ लखल्ट सो यू राइट डाउन वोल्ट करंट राइट डाउन एम्पीयर कैपेसिटन्स राइट डाउन फेराडे चार्ज राइट डाउन कुलम ओके यस यस एनी डाउट सो वैल्यू ऑफ कैपेसिटन्स इज यू कैन सी दैट यू गैट द नाइन हंड्रेड इंटू टेन एच टू माइनस सिक्स कुलम क्लियर now second you find out what voltage of each capacitor voltage of each capacitor so what is the value of the voltage of each capacitor now voltage across c1 and c2 that is v1 because both are connected in parallel so voltage remains same across c1 and c2 and c3 we call voltage v2 so what is the voltage v1 and v2 find out it <laughs> yes why it is 100 so you can directly derive this you can see that here in this figure equivalent capacitance of this 6 and 3 is what 9 so both the 9 microfarad and 9 microfarad are connected in series okay so when same capacitors are connected in series two capacitors of same value are connected in series so voltage across each capacitor is what half of the applied voltage applied voltage is 200 volt so here same value of capacitors connected in series two so same so each have a half of the supplied capacitors oh sorry supplied voltage so it is 100 and 100 volt v1 is 100 and v2 is 100 How do you understand this? Yes, all of you. Yes, yes sir. Okay. okay. Sorry, one minute. Uh, sorry for this interruption. Now all of you can see this presentation. Did you see the presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Sir. Okay. Okay. So write down the second example. When two capacitors A and B are connected across 200 volt DC supply, the potential difference across A 120 volt. and across b is 80 volt the potential difference across a is 
rise to 140 volts when V is shunted by 3 microfarad capacitor. So calculate the capacitance of A and B. This is the circuit diagram of the example number 2. Sir, yes. Sir, C one three point six and C two five point four. No, 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 no. See here, all of you please. Uh, at this example, but I luckily this example, so I move this. How to calculate this example? But I draw this figure. Yes or no? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes. So here, what is say that when two capacitor A and B are connected across 200 volt, you can see here. So it is not 200. Yes, it is 200. Okay. Yes. Yes. Here it is printing mistake. 200 volt. Okay. It's not 220. Here in the figure, you can see that it is 220 volt. Okay. But it actually it is a 200 volt because you can see that voltage across A is 120 and voltage across B is 80. So you can see the addition of both 120 plus 80 that must be become same as the supply voltage. So here there is a mistake in this figure. It is not 220, it is 200 volt. Okay. So please change this here in your figure. So potential difference across A that is rise to 140 volt when B, it means this B capacitor is shunted by 3 microfarad capacitor. At that time, the voltage across A that becomes 140. So, what is the value of capacitance A and B that you have calculated here? So, first we derive the equation when this 3 microfarad capacitor is not shunted. This Capacitor. Sir, shunted means it is kept in parallel yeah. with C2. Yes, 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 yes. Shunted means it is connected in parallel with the C2. Okay. So, you can see here, when two capacitors are connected in series, so we know that charge is remain same. So, Q is remain same in both the capacitors. So, we can equalize this equation. Q is equal to C1 into V1 is equal to C2 into V2. Okay, C1 is Sir, the what? Yes. 3.6 and 5.4 microfarad. No, no, no. I will explain. I, I will explain. Okay. So let's understand uh, this. Uh, yes. Yes, anyone? Any doubt? Sir, can we try it for uh, okay. some time? 
ओके ट्राई इट ट्राई इट ट्राई इट नो प्रॉब्लम सर सी टू इज थ्री पॉइंट सिक्स नो माइक्रोफेरा नो 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 सी वन इज ट्वेल्व माइक्रोफेरा डे एंड सी टू इज एटीन माइक्रोफेरा डे आवाज है कोई ना आंसर नो सर ये नहीं आ रहा है ओके ओके सो लेस पॉइंट सिक्स अन्ना फाइव पॉइंट फोर है जावे सर लेस अंडरस्टैंड लेस अंडरस्टैंड लेस ओके सो फर्स्ट इज व्हाट सी वन एंड सी टू � because charge is remain same in series connection so we can write q is equal to c1 into v1 is equal to c2 into v2 all of you agree with this equation now what is the value of v1 voltage across capacitor a that is given 120 volt c1 is the unknown quantity so we can write 120 into c1 then c2 into v2 c2 is unknown v2 is given 18 volt uh, sorry 80 volt so it is equal to 80 into C2. So we can make the equation of C1 from this 80 divided by 120 into C2. Okay. Here we need to calculate what capacitance C1 and C2. Okay. So now you can see that potential difference that is rises to 140 volt. Initially how much voltage across A? 120 volt. But after that voltage across A rises to 140 volt when Capacitor B is centered by 3 microfarad. Let's have a B capacitor na across ma. When I put the 3 microfarad capacitor, so the voltage across A that rises from 120 to 140. Okay. Now, in this condition, the charge is remain same across both the capacitor. You can see this figure. The capacitor C2 that is centered by 3 microfarad. Okay. So equivalent capacitance is what? C2 plus 3 microfarad. In parallel, we have addition. So C equivalent of this, C2 plus 3 microfarad. Clear? So here again, sir, charge across sir, this. Sir, yes? Sir, 18 is 60. 60 will come, sir. 60 will come, sir. Yes, sir, 60 should come. Seva, Seva answer? Sir. Water difference across B, B part. Sir, in equation 2, instead of 80, 60 should come. In equation 2? The total is 200 volts. So in the equation 2, the voltage across B is, V will be 60 volt instead of 80 volt. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. This is, this is a mistake. Okay, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. What do you write answer? What is your answer? C1 is? Sir, C1 is equal to 3.6 and C2 is equal to 5.5. Yes, 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 yes. Here I have made mistake. Here. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, sorry for the mistake. Here you get 140 across C1, so you get only 60 watt. Yes, yes. So correct this error here. So use this equation because charge is remain same across C1 and C2. So 140 into C1 is equal to here write the 60 60 okay into equivalent capacitance c2 plus 3 microfarad okay now put the value of c1 this value 
C1 is equal to 80 divided by 120 into C2. Put this value here in this equation number two. 80 divided by 120 into C2. Replace this 80 by 60. 80 is again 60 value of you. So what is the answer C2? Five point four six microfarad. Five point four. Three point six microfarad. Five point four. C2 C2. I am saying C2. Five point four microfarad. Yes yeah, yes. C2 is five point four. Yes, not 18 microfarad. Okay, that is mistake. Okay. So it is 5.4 microfarad C2. Now put the value of C2 in the equation number one. This one, 5.4 microfarad into 80 divided by 120. So what is your answer? C1? 3.6 microfarad. Yes, yes. 3.6 microfarad. Yes, yes. Very good, very good. Okay. So correct this error here. Replace this 80 by 60 only. Okay. Yes, this is my mistake. Have you understand this example? Is there any doubt? Yes, sir. No, okay. sir. Okay. So no, sir. Same exam, same type of example. I give you for homework. So write down. This is the third example. Two capacitors having capacitance of six microfarad and ten microfarad are connected in parallel. A 16 microfarad capacitor is connected in series with this combination, and complete circuit is connected in across the 400 volt. Calculate total capacitance of the circuit. Second, voltage across each capacitor, and third one is total charge in the circuit, and fourth one is charge on each capacitor. So that part I give you for homework. So you can see that two capacitors having capacitance six microfarad and ten microfarad are connected in parallel. So you can see in the circuit diagram, and this combination that is connected in series with the sixteen microfarad capacitor. So you can see that C three that is a sixteen microfarad connected in series, and all this combination that is connected across the four hundred volt supply voltage. So it is connected across the four hundred supply volt. So calculate first one. Total capacitance of circuit. It means calculate the equivalent capacitance. Two capacitor in parallel, six and ten. So there is addition. Six plus ten is sixteen. That is connected in series with the another sixteen microfarad. So in series connection, equivalent capacitance is what? Sixteen multiplied sixteen divided by addition of two sixteen capacitor. Okay. So you get the answer C equivalent eight microfarad. The answer of first question. Second is voltage across each capacitor. So here you can see that six and ten microfarad that are connected in parallel. So voltage is remain same. So that we call V one, and voltage across C three that is we call V two. So find out V one and V two. Okay. So you have. Find out this V1 and V2. So which equation you use? So you know that in series connection charge is remain same. So whatever charge in both these equivalent capacitance C1, C2, same charge you get in the capacitance C3. So you can write the equation V1 into equivalent capacitance of this is equal to V2 into C3. Here. Yeah. Or you can directly find out that both this capacitance it is 16 microfarad and 16 microfarad. Okay, so how much voltage? If both the capacitance has same value, so how much capacitance? Each. Half of the supply voltage. It is 200 volt. 200. So answer of second question is 200 volt. Okay. Then third question is total charge in the circuit. So how to find out total charge? So you first you already find out the C equivalent equivalent capacitance, and you already have a supply voltage. So Q is equal to what? C equivalent into supply voltage. Your C equivalent is what? Tell us sir. Eight microfarad, and your supply voltage is four hundred. Yes. So you get the total charge. And fourth one is the charge on each capacitor. 
so now you find out what charge on each capacitance means q1 q2 and q3 here you can see that this c3 is connected in series with this combination of 6 and 12 okay so charge on c3 same as the charge on all these two capacitors it means q1 plus q2 which is the addition of two two capacitor charge c1 and c2 that must be is equal to charge of capacitor c3 so it, you can make the equation q3 is equal to q1 plus q2 here yeah. and you can use the equation charge or uh, equation of charge q is equal to c into v here yeah. so this this part i give you for the homework calculate this example and we we'll discuss this example in the next lecture if you have any doubt okay so here i stop this lecture if you have any doubt you can ask me thank you sir Okay, thank, you, thank, you. Thank, you, thank you thank you sir 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 thank